If you've been wondering where I've been, seeing as I said that I'd make a whole series about fly videos, I have been stuck in this fly lab for about the last three or four weeks non-stop, which alongside moving house has been very stressful. But building a website with Squarespace need not be stressful. <laughs> I love these tenuous links. Uh, that's right, Squarespace is sponsoring this video. Thank you, Squarespace, for giving me money for promoting your wonderful service, which is a beautiful website designer, simple to use, doesn't require coding. You can buy domains on there, it has a shop functionality, and it does mobile stuff really well. It's pretty, it's simple, and if you want to try it out for free, you can go to squarespace.com slash cellular page for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So thanks Squarespace, use that link to thank Squarespace for paying me so that it gives me some motivation to upload videos because my god, I've just been sciencing so much recently that yeah, you'll see very, very soon, like now actually. Science is boring. I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell it to you, but that's just the way it is. When science communicators start calling themselves science cheerleaders, when science presenters are referred to as rock stars, when geek is the new cool, is said frequently enough to become a slogan on a t-shirt, you may easily become fooled into thinking that science is groundbreaking and exciting. Sure, scientific findings can be thrilling. Finding out that the bacteria in your gut not only vastly outnumber the cells in your body, but also control your brain. Okay, that's interesting. Or finding out that Mars, the red planet, is only superficially red and is actually grey just under the surface. And we know because we were able to catapult a one-tonne robot 560 million kilometres and land still within three kilometres of the target. Yeah, that's impressive. Or even finding out that the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, somehow knows who its relatives are and can change its mating behaviour accordingly. Yes, these are all cool findings. But the act of doing science, the process by which we discover these findings, is very often boring. And that's not accidental. By testing our predictions over and over again to improve reliability, by randomising and blinding our experimental design to reduce bias, by meticulously taking records so we can further examine a blip in the data that might turn out to be important, this all creates repetitive, boring, tedious science. The sort of science where you spend five minutes just writing the numbers 1 to 120 on the back of Petri dishes. Yes, it's only two and a half seconds per number, but when you're labelling literally thousands of dishes, vials and tubes, you end up spending hours of your life just writing one number after the next. Or the science where you're counting. Don't get me started on the counting. I have spent months with a tally counter in one hand, a box of dead flies in the other, just counting. Months. Then there's the science that requires slightly more brain engagement, but is no less soul-sucking, like painstakingly picking up a particular fly egg with a needle and putting it in a particular vial, and then repeating that 5,000 times. Because that's what science is. Science is people doing precise, mundane tasks over and over and over over again until they have enough data to find out something new about the world. And the allure of discovery, yes, it's seductive and exhilarating, but don't be fooled. Science is boring.